Did y'all just walk through the shoulders, laughing and singing and having a good time? First thing the father thinking is the kid is crazy. <laughs> but he answers that son, what's going on? What's going on? Look what look at his dad. You know, Dad, as much horsemanship as there is in this room, there must be a point at the bottom of it. <laughs> and the reason I tell you all that, guys in life, we all have a point. But sometimes we only deal with the crap we have around us. But I am living proof that if you grab a shovel every day, you can find your home. Because you heard about all the great things that I've done. But you know, my life wasn't really like that. I say everybody knows the glory, but they don't know the story. Because I grew up about seven miles from here in a little town called Wrightsville, Georgia. And if you got one year to live, you move there. And they did forever. Same old, same old. And my mom made me feel good because she told me I was big bone. <laughs> and all the kids and all the person, you're fat. And I used to, used to, used to, used to have, have a speech impediment where I couldn't put a sentence together and the teachers told me I was special. But all the kids said, no, her she really tired. No, seriously. In four years of my life, I never spoke in a classroom. Four years of my life, Kids didn't think I could speak. They used to push me around and hit me and stuff. And, and you know, I used to sit in the corner and never say a word. And my head was down. I was afraid of everything. But the last day of school, I decided to go out for recess. And I remember going outside like a cat going to a room looking to make sure everything was okay. And I stepped outside and that was a guy by the name of Anthony Logan. He jumped on me. He beat me up. I stared at him that night, Anthony Logan. But I Facebook and tweet trying to find you there. And I remember going home and crying and stuff, and everybody thought it was so funny that this fat kid, kid was crying and stuff. And, and I got home and I still didn't remember this. And I'm gonna take some of you back a little way of building an island was on. And all of a sudden I remember the voice coming to me saying, Bo, my nickname is Bo. Bo, you put that crying. The voice said, No one else will ever beat you up again. And no teacher will ever put you in the corner again. And that's the day I started working out. Mm -hmm. I started doing 5,000 push ups every day, 5,000 sit ups every day. My parents had a tree in the backyard with a limb about 10 feet off the ground. I used to climb this tree and start doing chin ups in this tree with it. I started going to the library, getting books, sitting in front of a mirror, reading to myself over and over and over. When my speech got a little better, and instead of walking down with my head down, I started walking around with my head up. And all of a sudden, I went back to school to the ninth grade. And instead of going to the corner where I normally sit, I sit down in front of the class. I started raising my hand to answer questions. And all of a sudden, this kid that the teacher thought could learn, come down toward his class. So I don't do that because there was only two people in my class. I would come down toward my class. And this kid that nobody wanted to play with, all of a sudden, become one of the best athletes in the country. I started getting scholarships, not just athletically, I started getting academic scholarships to go to college now. I can't even spell academic, that's what's so funny. Anyway, I started getting these academic scholarships, these athletic scholarships, but I'm gonna tell y'all something funny. I didn't really want to go to college. I spent time at West Point. I thought I was put out to be a Marine. I wanted to go to the military. But I couldn't bring myself to tell my mom and dad, your mom and dad, I, I really don't want to go to college, I don't want to go to the military. But then, so you know, signing day, signing day for athletes in February. Well, February came and went, March came and went, I ain't saying anything. April Sunday, Easter Sunday in April. My mom came to me and she said, Bo, don't you think it's time for you to decide what school you want to go to? And before I can say anything, she said, well, let me tell you this. If your mind and your heart is pure, Lord Jesus, it really don't matter about your decision, because God will be the right for you. And I'm a teenager, I'm like, all right, then I'll flip the coin. I'll flip the coin to decide whether to go to the military, go to college. You can't even go to college, and I go, crap. <laughs> now I'm mad that God ain't going to let you do what I want to do, so I'm not going to the University of Georgia. I decide I'm not going to the University of Georgia. I'm going to do a coin flip between Georgia and Clemson. For a flip, Georgia win. I said the best out of five. <laughs> you know, you know, two times. And I said, Mom, Dad, I love to go to USC. I love to go to USC out in California because I felt 
USC was so far from home, if USC win this coin toss, they'll let me go to the military. USC got the first flip, Georgia wins. Then flip USC, this the time Georgia. I said, wait, 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 I'm gonna pull the names out of my body. Y'all just understood. I put Georgia all three times. And I said, okay, I'm going to Georgia, I'm going to Georgia, and I didn't need it. I went outside to play with my younger brother, Lorenzo. And my parents and my father, all of them called my the reporters up, they called the coaches up. There's a horse of the side. It's coming to Georgia, it's coming to Georgia. And I was too embarrassed to tell them I was joking when they showed up that I signed to go to the University of Georgia and I was really going to go. But after I signed to go to the University of Georgia, I'm not sure if Coach Duda would give me a motivation speech, but I remember him coming up to my father and myself on my front porch. And his words were, we are happy to have Herschel on the team. Well, I'm not sure if Herschel can play at the University of Georgia. Because guys, you remember, I was one of the smallest students in the state of Georgia. I'm thinking, dude, I don't like you either. Because, you know, all my life, I've heard kids tell me I wasn't good enough to play with. All my life, I've heard teachers tell me I wasn't good enough to be in that classroom. But I thought I made myself good enough by being valedictorian, by getting scholarship to go to college. I thought I, said, I thought I made myself good enough that I need to go to college and not a coach said it when I did. And I said, all right. I remember going to train and getting ready to go to the University of Georgia. I get this letter to show up at the University of Georgia at 5 o'clock. I left Wrightsville, Georgia at 2 in the morning. Drove up to Athens, Georgia, got there about 3.30 in the morning. It's dark outside of the quarter hall in the parking lot. No cars for y'all, the only one day. And I remember walking around the car at about 4 o'clock. I'm walking around the car, I'm still in the dark by myself. 4 30, I'm getting nervous, am I in the wrong place? But I remember we had to meet at the cafeteria, so I go to the cafeteria. The letter I got it in the winter. And the letter at the bottom said, be there about 5 p.m. <laughs> so I'm a little bit early right now. So I go get in the car, I turn the radio on, turn the radio off, and walk around the car, and all of a sudden, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, this white 280 this white 280 ZX drive up. I'm going to run up to this car, and I stuck my hand out like a gentleman, and we're all talking my pants. This bold up this thing, dude, gets out of the car. And he looked at me and he didn't shake my hand. He said, hey, freshman, you take my bags up to the room. I grab his bag and I take him up to the room and I go back to him. Hey, freshman, take my car around back. Take his car around back and then he goes, hey, freshman, you need to wash my car. Huh. This dude didn't carry the load, but I'm going to wash his car. So I'm out there washing his car. About this time, the meeting starts. <coughs> the meeting starts and I go into the cafeteria. Some guys doing the elephant walk, some of them doing the leapfrog, and this is understood. Matt Hustle turned to me and said, hey, Herschel, we need you to stand in the corner on the crane on one day and put your, put your nose in the circle. I remember this angry, but I was about to turn around and say something, but before I said anything, the voter was standing dude by the name of Francisco Ross. Francisco Ross was the first Latino in America to play at the University of Georgia. And I'm going to call him Frank Walls because Francisco is not in my vocabulary. But anyway, <laughs> Frank turned to me and said, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm going to declare I want to take Herschel Walker to be my little brother. The whole room was all getting upset and stuff to go to Coach Dude and Coach Dude said, if he want to do that, he can. Frank turned to me and said, Herschel, sit down. I sit down and no one said another word to me. Later that night, I said, Frank, what's going on? What's going on? Frank said, well, Herschel, everyone on this team decided we were going to make your life miserable here. So we are going to dog you out because you waited so long to sign. We thought you felt you were better than we were. So we were going to dog you out. He said, but I got here. I asked you to do all that stuff. He said, you never said one word. I said, you should have known what I was thinking of. And now, <laughs> this football stuff started. Guys, I showed up at the University of Georgia about six feet tall, 215 pounds, running a legit 4-3-4. I don't know if you know what a 4 3 is, but you can go get it on a 4 3. I'm doing everything right. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, coach. I'll do that. I'm doing everything I thought was right. But I was a mama boy. And I would call home. And I said, Mom, how you doing? She said, Well, Bo, uh, we read in the paper that Coach Duke said, You're not doing too well right now. We read in the paper. He said, It's going to be a while. But she used to always end by saying, But don't you worry about it. Because the Lord is making a way for you. I used to think, what does God got to do with football and stuff? Well, now, I remember we were going to play in Knoxville, Tennessee, 90, 95,000 people. 
I remember a week before going to the game, we were sitting in a meeting like this. We go do the word work. We're traveling to Moxville. Some of you going to travel with the team, and we're going to leave some behind. But Herschel, you're going to travel with the team, but you're not going to play. That's exactly what I said. You're not going to play in this game. I remember getting into uh, the Tennessee Stadium. I was walking out the tunnel. Coach Dewey was in front of Connie Norris, who was in front of me. And as we're walking through the tunnel, Coach Dewey turned around and he said, Herschel, you're not playing in this game, but stay close, you can learn something. But I don't think Coach Dewey realized that my mom said, man can't stop what God got in store for you. But we did it this game. We get it beat 15 to nothing. This is an honest truth. I don't know if anyone was at this game. You can remember this. 95,000 people. They don't even did Georgia 2006, but they put it in the end zone where they couldn't see the herd. And all of a sudden, you get behind 15 to nothing. That was a chance. We want Herschel. We want Herschel. Coach Duda tell you the only reason he decided that we play is because of that chance. 2,000 over 93,000. We want Herschel, and he decided to throw me into this game. And threw me into this game. We end up winning this game 16 to 15. Now I got to play the next week against Texas a &M. We beat them 42 to 9. And I have three touchdowns, 180 on the yard, and three quarters. I only played three quarters. Now I got to play the rest of the year. But Coach Duda tell you today, he didn't believe in freshman playing the first year, so he was always trying to find something I was doing wrong. He used to check and make sure my room was done. Coach Duda didn't know I knew how to make my bed. I knew how to clean my room up, because I used to get a spanking that I didn't know how to do it okay. And knock down the advocated spankings. Because Ava Peaches messed that up, but I'm not advocating that. But anyway, <laughs> I got to make my bed and do all that stuff and, and everything. And then all of a sudden, he used to check and make sure I was in class. But he didn't know I love to go to class, guys. I love learning, so I was always in class. So I couldn't get in trouble about anything. So I had to play all year. We got to play all year. We go to the national championship against Notre Dame and the Sugar Bowl. And all of a sudden, we beat Notre Dame for the national championship. And all of a sudden, they said, Herschel, you're nominated for the Heisman Trophy as a freshman. The whole University of Georgia got excited about it. And I was pretending I was excited about it. I'm going to tell y'all something else you don't know about me. I didn't know what the Heisman Trophy was. <laughs> Guys, I had never followed football. I learned football from a book. The only reason I played football is I didn't want to wash dishes. My mom used to make me wash dishes. I grew up in the country. Like I said, 70 miles from here. There's nothing there but Walmart. No, that didn't make a Walmart. We got Piggy Wiggly and Dairy Queen. That's all we got. Anyway, I used to wash dishes. My mom used to make me wash dishes. So I had a bright idea. Why don't I start playing football, which would get me out of from playing washing dishes, which was a mistake because they saved the dishes for you later after practice. Anyway, <laughs> So I only to play football because of that. So I never followed football. So I didn't know what the Heisman Trophy was. So I went out to the library and read about it. Now I read about the Heisman Trophy. I go, wow, that's a big time award. Uh, that's a big time award. It would be great if we won because, you know, they said we were the best team in college football. But in 1980, they didn't give it to me. If you can remember, they gave it to some guy by the name of George Rogers. Yeah, yeah that, I said the same thing. Who the heck is that? Everybody said, who the heck is that? But anyway. Uh, and going to my sophomore year, remember guys, I lost one regular season game. We have another incredible year. As a sophomore, I get nominated for the Iowa Trophy. They ain't get to me then either. But you remember this. They gave it to Marcus Allen at USC. Now I'm a whole lot better looking than Marcus Allen. I <laughs> say God is funny. Because so God can hear what you say sometimes. So he, God has a plan. You got to follow his plan. Not your own plan. So I decided, if you remember this going to my junior year, Remember, I had a cast on my right hand. Let me tell you what happened. I decided I'm leaving the University of Georgia. I'm going to leave the University of Georgia and go to the recruiting office and join the military. The day I was going to leave on Friday afternoon, the coaches told me not to run this play, but I'm going to run it anyway. I was running this, this the ball. I only gained two yards, but I was 49. I'm going to catch myself, and I broke my thumb. And that bone was sticking up through the skin, and I go, crap. And I said, God don't love me no more. And I remember trying to put that bone back in my hand. And I couldn't get it in there. And now I'm, I'm, I'm scared to death now because I think my father got to pay for it. And I told everyone my father was cheap doing and picking up. But anyway, but I went off to the hospital to have what they call a local done. That's when they cut the circulation off in your arm. You can watch them do the surgery. And I was watching this doctor get this bone back into my hand. But Something that was amazing, he had a power record drill on the table that he got from Ace Hardware School. <laughs> at 4 p.m., 